What's going on guys? So today we're going to be doing the Burp Suite repeater box. Um, I apologize for being out for as long as I was. I've been sick, so I haven't been able to upload anything. Um, but this is a continuation of the Burp Suite um, learning path that we were doing with the junior pen testing. So let's get started. Um, first things, the outline. We know what Burp Suite is. We covered that in the last box. We know what repeater is technically, but we'll cover it a little more. So what it is, is it's basically a way that you guys can intercept packets and you can see here we can actually create our own and we can intercept packets and create our own and edit them and send them send the response okay so or see the response excuse me so that's exactly what it does that's what it's for we can actually craft our own right here brand new if we wanted to or we could actually just capture one edit it send it on and continue troubleshooting by sending forward getting the response sending forward getting the response and kind of hit and miss. So this is the interface. What we're looking at here up top here are the different um, packets that have been sent to repeater. So we could have a bunch of them here and we could be messing with multiple at once. Um, here, these are the send. This is just the control dashboard, what you can do with them. Um, then here in this big area is the request and response. So what that means is this is where the request would be when it's captured and this is the response here. And then these are just different views that you can do. You can see here, depending on how you like to see it. And then inspector we'll cover here in a minute. And then up here would be the IP address of the target. All right, so now basic usage. So if we go to proxy, we could see this here has been captured. We can hit control R to send it, control R to send it to repeater. And you can see it lit up and here's it sent to repeater. So what you can do here, this is the proxy, we covered this in the last one, is you can actually take them and send them to repeater and when that happens, now you have this nice format where you can edit it, get a response, and then you notice here, up here, it filled in the target for us and it filled in inspector, okay? So what we're looking at here, and it's covering some of this is, doo -doo -doo -doo, some of the things you can edit, so it's covering here, the connection, you can see it says close if we hit send, it says connection closed. Now let's say we go ahead and hit change it to open, which is what it tells us, and we hit send. And you can see now it says connection keep alive. So that's the different things you can edit. Um, you can obviously edit a lot more, but that's just showing you a direct correlation between what you edit and the response. Now the inspector, you can see here, it's gonna show the request headers and things. You can edit these in here, add headers, delete headers and stuff like that in the inspector, or you can edit the direct raw text. It's up to you. All right, so the views. So here we have the pretty, raw, hex, and then render. So what it is, you can see here, if we go to pretty, it shows us this nice little pretty format. Everything's easily readable, so on and so forth. You hit raw, and you notice those spaces and things aren't there for you to actually see that nice view. If you hit hex, this is the actual binary. And then render, it's not gonna work here because of how small it is, but basically what it is, is it's gonna load the page like it would normally. Now, pretty is what we're gonna use most of the time. Raw is okay too. All it is is raw is the actual format that it's being received. Pretty just pretties it up for you. That's it. All right, so now the inspector here, they're gonna cover a little bit more in it if you want, but you can see like if I wanted to add a cookie, instead of actually typing it out here, I go to request cookies and add and actually send whatever I want to it, right? And it will add it for me. So that's, that's nice if you don't know the format or if you're not sure where it goes or however you wanna do it. Now, practical, here we'll go to our proxy. We'll go ahead and drop everything here. I only do this so that way we don't have anything in there. We go here, get rid of that, and we'll just go to the website. And you can see it's it's hung up, it's not doing anything. It's because it's waiting for me to forward it. So now I will send this to repeater. Boom, we're on repeater now. And then we're gonna add this actual um, flag flag authorized true and, I'll, and then make sure you have the two spaces afterwards all this is doing is telling it to look if it has that it's going to give us this flag and there's our first flag so we captured the first one pretty easy it tells you how to do it but it's just showing that if you directly edit this the response changes that's what it's showing um, the practical two this one is pretty easy so it's saying 
here and we're not even going to go to it. We're just going to go here and say products, right? And then three and hit send. We'll get rid of this flag authorized equals true. Then we'll hit send. And you can see we get an actual response. So this is an actual response. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get an error. We want it to 500 error. There's the 500 error. So I put a negative in front of the three. All that's doing is giving it something that doesn't make sense to it. It's giving me this 500 error. And when I get that 500 error, you can see here, here's the flag. Now the reason some people ask all the time, like why would I want to error it out? Most of the time error messages have information about the backend server. Whether you realize it or not, the, um, the actual error messages, usually some sysads and stuff don't change them. And when that happens, you actually get version numbers, things like that from the server itself. So you're getting information simply by erroring it out. Now, excuse me, now we're gonna do the SQL. This says extra mile, but it's one of the challenges, so I'm not sure what extra mile you're going to. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start capturing a request for about two. Now I already did this for us. So here we have the about two. So here's the about and then I actually have the request set in the way it's supposed to be to get the flag. The reason I did this is because I don't want this video to be that long, I'm not feeling well, and this is, walks you through every step, so I'm gonna explain the process and then you guys can do it yourself, but I want you to see the actual command that you need to type in to make sure you do it correctly. So, what we got here is we go to get an about two, that's the ID number of the whoever you're, um, going to be doing it for whatever profile. So now one way we can test this is we could change this about to and we could just put apostrophe. Okay. If you put an apostrophe and then hit send in the response, you get a 500 error. That's telling you right there that, Hey, the, the actual SQL command, it errored out. That means you did change this, this command by putting that apostrophe, meaning you probably closed it, right? So you changed it. Now, when you do that, you'll get this you'll see this statement in the code, select first name, last name. That won't typically be in the code, I'll tell you now, because that just gives you a ton of information. Now you already have the first name, the last name, PFP link, the role, the bio, and the table people. So you already have all this information. It won't normally be in there. So what it tells you to do here is go ahead and go to the about, change the ID from two to zero. The reason they change the ID, it's super simple. They just don't want you to keep pulling the same information from whoever profile two is um, because it's just going to convolute more stuff. So it just gets it out of your way. Um, then you're going to do the union command. You're going to select all column name and you're going to say null, 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 null. And the reason from that is because you know how many rows you need and the null will just say, Hey, fill these with nothing. That way it doesn't error out um, from, and then we're going to say information schema columns. That's going to give us the columns from the table people. Now, when it does this, you'll see that the about, that's where it's going to show up. It's going to say ID is done, but it's only showing us one, one answer. We need all of them. So what we do is that same command that we've done in the past, which is the concat, and that's going to concatenate them all together. It's going to actually push them, put them all together on one line. So then when you do that, you'll see you'll get this about, but now it'll say ID, first name, last name, PFP link, role, short role, bio, and notes. Now this is a big deal because what it is is now we've actually gathered all this information. So we actually have the columns that we need. Now it's telling us here, our notes is the column that we're gonna try and extract. So we have the information we need. All we gotta do is craft this little query here. And it says right here, union, union all select notes, null, 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 because we gotta still fill those columns and then from people where ID equals one. So we know the ID equals one because if you go to Jameson Wolf's profile, his about page is number one. So that's the CEO, that's what we want. So here you can see, I type that in, I set, send send, and there's his flag right there because that's his notes. So let's put that in. And that's, it's that easy guys. Now I know it, I went through it fast, but it walks you through everything, um, everything that you need to know. Um, we've done some of these SQL injections in the past, and we this is almost a 
I don't want to say word for word remake, but it's almost the exact same ones we've done in the SQL injection box, which is why I'm not going to um, cover them that much because it is the exact same as some of the other boxes we've done. So therefore, you can go back to the SQL injection box if you want to learn SQL injection. That's not what the point of this box. The point of this box is to use repeater. So I want you guys to really mess with the repeater, sending it different things, stuff like that, um, editing it if you can, and then also learning how to use it just to do a SQL injection, even though in the SQL injection box, I think we use repeater also. I can't remember though. So now that's the end of the box, guys. Um, I must have missed a task here. Hold on. Yep, I never clicked complete there. And there we go. There's our box. So hopefully you guys like this video. It's a shorter one because this doesn't have much content. We've covered Burp Suite. We've covered Repeater in the past. This just wants you to um, use it to experiment and to learn how to interact with it. So hopefully you guys learned something. I'm going to keep trying to do these um, depending on how I feel. I'm still going to do them, but it's going to probably slow down because I have been feeling like crap for a while and it's not getting much better. So hopefully this helped you guys and hopefully you guys learned something. Thanks, guys.